story is in, in Elijah, um, he was being blessed by a raven. He was comfortable by the brook because the rest of the world was in the, a drought situation. But every day, Elijah had food and water. But all of a sudden, life changed for him. The change happens in verse 7. The Bible said that the brook did what? Dried up. And not only did the brook dry up, but the raven didn't show up. Life will change in a moment's notice. We never know when God will change our circumstances. Amen? Or we never know when God uh, would allow circumstances to be changed. Who would ever thought on Palm Sunday that we would not be in the building? Amen. Most of us had planned that we was going to be here on Palm Sunday. Amen. Most of us had planned Easter Sunday. We'd already bought our dresses, our suits. Amen. We had some purple, some yellow, some white. Amen. Come on and talk back to you. You know how we do on Easter Sunday. Amen. Folk come to church on Easter Sunday who haven't been to church since last Easter Sunday. Amen. But they're going to make it in there on Easter Sunday. Amen. They already made the preparations. I, I see somebody and I got the green suit. The green socks, the green hat, and the green shoes. Amen. They just knew they were going to be looking good. But we never know when life will change. And we never know what will happen from one day to the next day. Elijah now is living by the brook in hiding. But all of a sudden, his life changed. And even while, and notice this, Corbin. Life changes for him, and he's still in the will of God. Because it was God who told him to hide by the brook Cherida. So he's doing what God told him to do, but yet and still, life changed. I want to suggest, and I'm not going to talk about this one day, you can be in the center of God's will, and life will still change for you. Amen. Change will come in your life. Here it is hiding by a brook. Um, he had, his bread came to an end. His water came to an end. The ugly black raven didn't show up. And all of a sudden, his brook dried up without warning. And it was without warning because nowhere does God send a message to Elijah and say, Elijah, things are, are getting ready to change. God does not, sometimes in God's will, he does not send us a message and tell us that things are, are getting ready to change. A amen. The change just happened. And, but, the, but this is what we have to remember, that even though change happened, that God is still the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Everything around you might change. But God still changed. Amen. The first thing I want to learn from the text, and, and I'm getting to the text early, and, and I know somebody said, I know somebody saying, said, well, if the church was full, he don't get to the teaching part that soon. Amen. I'm just learning a new technique. Amen. But it, it won't last no longer than you get back in here. Amen. Amen. So here we go. So the, here we go. So this is the thing that happens. So now his brook dries up. And God speaks to Elijah again and tell Elijah, I want you to move from this brook. And I want you to go to the city that is called Zarephath. And there you will meet a widow woman. And notice this. And then I'm going to get into the teaching part. I, I'm, I'm happy right now. Amen. He brings Elijah out of hiding and now takes him into a city. Do God sometimes bless us in hiding or places where others cannot see what has happened in order to take us out and put us on public display in order that we might have a testimony that I know what God is able to do. Amen. So sometimes when you're all alone that you receive the blessings from God 
And God is just preparing you to put you on public display to give you a testimony what God is able to do. I, I know it's not many of us in here today, but I need you to wave your hand. And those of you who are listening or looking at it, how many of you ever had God to bless you in private? That when he to put you in a public display, that nobody could tell you what God can or cannot do. Because in your private moments with God, you know what God is able to do. The first thing I want you to learn from this text, and number one thing I want you to learn, the circumstances of life change.